Yeah, hello. I'm Dr. Lee from Seoul National University Hospital, Seoul, Korea. And today my talk is about CSP non-responder in patients with heart failure who are needing cardiac resynchronization therapy. At this moment, the current guideline did not much mention about the CSP CRT. Patients who had LBBB, reduced ejection fraction, and wider QRS, biventricular pacing as a classic one, got a, a class one recommendation. In this population, CSP CRT got a class two B recommendation. And when the physician failed the classic biventricular pacing, uh, CSP CRT as an option, alternative option for class two A recommendation. But all these uh, CSP CRT recommendation is level of based on level of evidence C. Actually, there is not much uh, data for the patients who uh, would be non-responder for the CSP CRT, but we can get uh, one clue in the ECG. Then classic, typical LBBB patients got more uh, benefit from C CSP CRT. And when patients have IV, uh, IVCD, that patients are likely to uh, poorer or non-responder to the CSP CRT. And one more uh, clue we can get from cardiac MRI and patients who had uh, much scar on diffuse myocardium or patients have septal scar, the uh, CSP CRT can be technically challenging and also that in that case, patients receive uh, less benefit from the CSP CRT. Uh, is that not much data for the clinical factors or ECG factors? Uh, for the patients who will be non-responder on CSP CRT. But uh, the principle is when patients have conduction dyssynchrony, they can get more uh, benefit from CSP CRT. So one uh, important clue from ECG, then typical LBBB pattern patients have typical LBBB pattern, their patients have a higher chance to uh, respond uh, from CSP CRT, but patients with IBCD, that patients are uh, highly uh, would be the non-responder or poor responder from CSP CRT. And we can get uh, one more clue from cardiac MRI. So the CSP CRT, the lead uh, usually placed in the septal area. So patients who have transmuter uh, septal scar or fibrosis, the procedure can be more challenging and. Uh, the results of the CSP CRT uh, would be uh, poor, or patients who have diffuse scar on the, their LB myocardium, that kind of patients also uh, easily to be the uh, non-responder or poor responder. Yeah, that kind of things are not fully, you know, uh, evaluated in CSP CRT field, but. We can uh, get some clues from the observational study and RCT that patients who had LBBB and non-ischemic cardiomyopathy, that characteristics is typical responder from CSP CRT. Otherwise, uh, in patients with ischemic cardiomyopathy who had severe disease on proximal LAD or diffuse multivessel disease, that patients uh, might be non-responder because they have a uh, dense scar on the in a place that CSP lead usually placed. And uh, whatever, whichever the etiology of heart failure is, patients who had high burden of uh, myocardial scar or progressive nature of their uh, disease, that can be uh, non-responder from the CSP CRT as well as the biventricular CRT. With uh, the adoption of uh, growing LBB area pacing, the target zone of LBB area pacing is important to achieve a good result of our procedures. And the patients who had dense fibrosis or transmuter scar on their uh, septal area, uh, it makes us the technical challenging to penetrate the septal area and achieve true conduction system uh, capture and achieve a good response for the CSP CRT. Another uh, consideration is the patients who has very large chamber, especially in right atrium, that uh, make us very challenging because we have just almost a fixed it, curved the tool in, at this time point. So uh, that kind of anatomical challenging make us difficult to uh, achieve the good uh, position of the LBB area pacing in heart failure patients. Yeah. Uh, at this time point in our center, we tried uh, LBB area uh, pacing first in patients with typical LBBB 
and non-ischemic cardiomyopathy. And in that procedure, when we achieve the perfect LBB area uh, pacing capture, then we switched our strategy to biventricular pacing. And if biventricular pacing cannot achieve a good result in procedure, we back up the hybrid approach, for example, last CRT kind of things, then we uh, just tried uh, everything in one procedure to achieve the best outcome. Non-responder non non in biventricular pacing is quite well characterized because we have many data from the biventricular pacing RCTs. So in CSP CRT field, we don't have that kind of you know uh, large size and uh, long history data. So we need uh, from the uh, big triers like left versus left kind of things. We uh, can find some clues that which patients need which strategy first. So I don't think CSP CRT versus 5 and CRT, there is some, some kind of absolute winner between two. Some patients need CSP CRT more and some patients need 5 and CRT more or some patients need the hybrid approach for the best outcome. So in future study, we can you know, delineate that uh, uh, by patient specific characteristics, we can choose the first uh, option for the cardiac resynchronizing therapy. Yeah.